Hey, this is Luke with Solstrong. In this video, we're going to be talking about the FG knot. And the question came in, how many coils should we be using for the FG knot? And I, something I haven't really done a defined test on. So I started doing some analysis and the results have been shocking. Uh, so I also I have a new winner. So on a 10 pound braid, guess what the breaking strength is, right? A 10 pound braid, the record before was 25 pounds, which is amazing. Now it's 26.92 pounds. And this, so there's a big difference. What I've learned is that there's actually a really big difference from, from using a lot of coils to, to fewer. Because in some cases it'll slip, right? I've had some issues where uh, here's two breaks, two post-break analysis. The one, the one without the yellow on it, that was a slippage. You can see at the very top of that leader, those coils were there, but they eventually slid off. So that was 14 coils. So 14 coils has a very high risk of slippage. The other one is going to be is 20. And so that one you can see it did not slip, it broke, and that is what it looks like when the FG knot actually breaks and not slips. But even still, even when they do slip with 14 coils, the breaking strength is actually better than most other knots, like the double uni and a lot of other knots I tested, even the ones when they slip, it's still better than the uni. So I just wanted to keep that perspective. So anyhow, I'll, I'll go down, I'll get to the computer. I've done a lot of different tests. I've done 14, 20, 30 turns, and I've been switching between this Power Pro and the Daiwa 8 gram and 10 pound lines, 30 pound liter. And in case you're new to this system on how we're doing this, this is the Breakinator. One of our Insider Club members made this. Andy, you rock. This thing is awesome. But this is a motorized system where it has the, right, the, the same tension applied every time. We have the FG knot right here. This is a 30 turner. We should have a very good braking strength. And then we have the dowel to make sure that the, the, the weak point is right here. So let's go ahead and turn it on. We have the, the tension meter right here, and it's going to show the peak. So it's going at a nice steady pace. And you see it now, it's in pounds right now. So now we're at 25, 26.31. So that's a 10 pound braid, 26 pounds. That is legit. And now we can look at the brake, right? The coils are still there. The, the break pretty much always happens right toward the top of the knot. But uh, anyhow, I've done a lot of tests, as you can see. I'll put together the analysis on what I've found so far. I'll share the, the trends that I've seen, and I'd love to get your feedback. So let's kick it over the computer, and we'll see you there. So here are the results. So what I did is I did some tests with 14 turns, with 20 turns, and then with 30 turns. And then I did, I was using two different lines to see what the differences was. One was Power Pro. This is a, a four-strand braid. And the other one was Daiwa 8 Grand, and that's an 8-strand braid. So, so the 8-strand is in gray, um, and then Power Pro is in, the 4-strand is in white. And so here are the differences. So it was very clear that the 14 turns was not as strong as the others. And in fact, it was an average of 28% weaker. And what I saw was that even though the, the braking strength was good, right, 18, 18 pounds is better than most other knots, like the double uni, and the Crazy Alberto on the 10 pound braid is generally around 17 to 18 pounds. So this actually did great, even though it slipped. Uh, but when we add the extra coils, it got better and better. So on average, the 20 turn got up to almost 24 pounds, which is, that's incredible, right? That's extremely good with the 10 pound braid. And then going up to 30 bumped it up even more. So it was a 3% increase to go up to 30 turns and so that was 24.24, and as you can see, uh, or sorry, right here is the new record on a 10 pound line breaking, and it was at 26.92 pounds. That was 30 turns, and uh, that was pretty remarkable. I never thought I'd see a 10 pound line uh, break at that, that high of a rate. But even still after doing this test, I'm not gonna do 30 turns because when I was cinching it down, I noticed that it was much tougher to get all the coils to, to really go into the line, especially the very first one. When people are having issues with casting lures off, it's always due to the very first coil, the coil that's closest to the lure. If that's not embedded in the line, if it's not embedded in the leader, that the, the, the friction of the, the knot hitting the rod guides, when it's cast it out, that can actually compromise it and it'll actually lift the entire knot off. If that first coil goes, the entire knot will slip off and there goes your lure. So what I'm doing now is uh, really 18 to 20 turns. Um, I feel like that's been the sweet spot as far as maximizing my strength 
And then also it allows me to be able to make that first coil dig into the line. So another interesting thing I noticed in this test is down here at the bottom, I just summed together all the power pros and all the eight grands and averaged them. And so on the 14 turn, the power pro actually won. Um, so it was 19.6 versus 18. And, uh, and I believe that's because just that power pro is four strain, it's a little bit more uh, aggressive. So even though the, the knots still did slip in most cases, a couple of them did not, but most did, um, that, that, uh, that line with the more abrasive exterior did a better job of holding. But then when we go over to the, the 20 turn and the 30 turn even more so, the eight grand took the cake, right? So the eight grand was 5% stronger at 20 turns and then went up to 12% stronger on the 30 turns. So clearly that's just a stronger line for whatever reason. They're both the same, same diameter, but, uh, but it was very impressive to see that the, uh, the eight grand in particular, right? You can see two 26s in this one test is pretty, uh, pretty cool, but very curious to see what you've been doing, right? I've, I've heard of people doing 16 turns, 20, 30, even more than 30. I'm curious to know if you're, if you're having any issues with your lures casting off uh, if you go 30. If you're going 30, I would highly recommend not putting the, the knot through the guides. Um, it, cause if you don't, right, if you, if you're never putting your knot through the guides, you don't have to really worry so much about that first coil. And then you can go up to 30 and have a little bit, a little bit stronger knot. Uh, but even still, I'm still going to stick with the 18 to 20 coil range. It has a good, a good blend, as I mentioned before, of, of first of all, very good knot strength. And then second of all, uh, a very low risk. Of, of casting lures off of the line. So that's it for now. Just wanted to share this latest and greatest analysis. Any questions at all, as always, leave a comment down below. And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we're the best fishing club for inshore saltwater anglers, especially if you're going after redfish, sea trout, snook, or flounder. There's nothing else like it. We actually guarantee you'll be catching more fish while saving both time and money. We do this through our premium education, our exclusive insider community, and huge discounts on all the tackle you need. To learn more, go to saltstrong.com. Otherwise, hope to see you again soon.